children, the children, the children. Don't forget the children, the children. I've seen many, been to many meetings, and the children are they're, they're on the side, they're playing, they're drawing, they're doing stuff. And there's coming a time where the children will be leading the worship, the children will be leading the prayer, the children will be leading in, in the preaching of the word. In Jesus' name. Get ready. Get ready for the unusual. There's a major shift coming within the body of Christ. In Jesus' name. Major shift. Major shift. And you're going to be part of the shift. You're not going to be left out. In Jesus' name. The children are not going to be left out. The seniors are not going to be left out. The middle-aged are not going to be left out. No race is going to be left out. It's going to cover the world. Cover the world. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, racism, racism will be eradicated by the love of God. Amen. Not by protesting, but the love that's poured out through the people of God. In Jesus' name. Oh, the name of most so-called. Yes, Lord. All the angels cry out. All the angels cry out. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Oh. Here we are. Here we are. A move. A move of God. 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 A move of God has arrived. In Jesus' name. This, I just seen the spirit of criticism just packing its bags and running away off and off and into the abyss. And I, I just seen it lifted. I just seen it lifted. As many Christians are, have a PhD in criticism. They, they know how to criticize. They have a PhD. That PhD is going to get rid of it. going to turn it in. They're going to turn it in for a, for a heart of love. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. It's, it's changing, it's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting. Start with me first, Lord. Start with me first, Lord Jesus. Oh, uh, I, I believe the Lord is doing it. You know, you're wondering what we're doing here tonight. We're not really sure, but we know the Lord is up to something. Amen. We know the Lord is up to something, and He's shifting something in our hearts tonight. Not everybody's ready for this yet. Not everybody's ready, but they're coming. Amen. He's working on the remnant right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, say it like you mean it. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Oh, la, 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 He's so good. He's so good. How, how many want to be wrapped? Wrapped, wrapped in the Holy Spirit. Amen. I feel like he's we're wrapped in the Holy Spirit tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You need to receive power tonight from on high. That's what we need. You need to receive power from on high. You may think that you have enough, but you don't have enough yet. I always say, you know, I've got enough for me, but I don't have enough yet for my neighbors. I don't have enough yet for Riversdale. I have enough for, for too long the church has been concerned just with that. Oh, we've got enough for ourselves, so that's good. No, it's not. There has to be an overflow from a forgiven soul that begins to move through the through the hatred and the anger and the bitterness and the hurt and the and the sickness and disease that's plaguing our land in Jesus' name. Sickness and disease is plaguing the church. It's a plague and it's got to go in the name of Jesus. Everywhere I go, at least 50% of the people will need, will need prayer for healing. At least, you know. And that not, should not be so. We're getting to the place now where the children of God are going to be like, um, like lightning rods. The presence of God is, they're going to be like lightning rods rods and they're going to get struck with the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be delivered and set free from addiction. Be delivered and set free from 
anger and bitterness and sickness and infirmity in Jesus' name. It's coming. It's coming. I, I got so I got I got to read you this little bit of stuff here. Many years ago, a Gallup poll was conducted to see how many people, uh, Christian people, who spoke in tongues and who were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the result of that poll, from Gallup poll, was all over the world: 500 million Christians. 500 million. Five, just think of that number just for a moment now. 500 million spirit-filled believers, tongue-talking Christians. 2,000 years ago, there were 120 people filled with the Holy Spirit in an upper room. And they turned the world upside down. 120 people transformed the world with the power of the gospel of the kingdom. The sick were healed, the lame walked, the, the deaf heard, the blind see, the dead were raised. It continues. 120, it started with 120 blue right away. The first day of the church it exploded to 3,000. One day, it's great growth. So now we have 500 million people that are filled filled with the Holy Spirit. So what are we missing? I think what we're missing is boldness and understanding what the call of God is for our life in Jesus' name. Like what is, what's the call? What, what, what is the call? What, what is, what are we supposed to be doing? The early church, they knew right away, they knew that Jesus told them, He says, go heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, and cleanse the lepers, and you'll have a successful church. It'll grow, it'll grow, it'll grow, it'll grow, it'll grow, it'll grow. Many times we, we tell people, you know, you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit so you can speak in tongues. Which is, a, it's true, it's important. But that's not what the focus the Lord had on. The Lord never had, on the Great Commission, never had his focus on the tongues. Tongues are important. Don't get me wrong, I, I pray in tongues all the time. I, I walk around in, in the store, wherever, I'm praying in the Spirit. It's, it's a necessity. But if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, tongues should come as breathing comes to an infant after they're born. Do you hear me? Tongues should come to a believer after they're filled with the Holy Spirit as breathing comes to a newborn baby that is born right out of the womb. It should be, a, it should be an automatic, right? What we have done is we put our focus on the tongues and put it the tongues become a finish line, which is important. Tongues is important. I'm not downplaying. We got it. We, we pray in we pray in tongues pretty well. All prayer meeting, we pray in the spirit. That's what we pray. We pray in the spirit. It's effective. It's the Holy Spirit praying through you back to the Father. Amen. And it's it's effective. You may not understand it, but it's very effective. But we made tongues the finish line. It's not the finish line, it's only the beginning. It's one of the first initial signs that you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but boldness is really, really what we need. I, I just want to read, let's go to a couple of scriptures, Acts chapter 1, and we'll, we'll go back into worship right away. This, is, this move of God is going to be an incredible uh, move in worship. <laughs> the people of God are going to really, we worship for over three hours on Sunday night. Never got to the Word. Uh, but people's lives were changed. Mine was. And it was worship. We worshiped all night. We could have did that tonight again, but I really felt we had to get some of the word. I've been attempting to preach some of this stuff for about four weeks. I haven't got there yet. You know, we, it's, it's either shifted in the service or we worship. Like Sunday morning, I usually get a message in, but the last three services, and Wednesdays and Sundays, I haven't got, I haven't got to preach. But... Tonight, I, feel, I really feel it's really important. It kind of feels like I'm, I'm in a drum or something here. Like, is some, do I sound kind of hollow or it's okay for you guys? If it's okay for you guys, don't worry about it. I can live with it. I feel like I have a heavenly voice or something. No, it's, it's just kidding. That's the anointing. <laughs> but, yeah, somebody just got mad at me. But anyway, and listen to this. This is Jesus, and, and these are Acts chapter 1, verse 48. 4 to 8 
and uh, it said, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power. Say power. power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and to all, in all Ju Ju Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He's called us. We shall receive power. So that's what you'll receive when, you're, when you wait for that power from on high. Power to be witnesses for Jesus. And a witness for Jesus that's full of the Holy Spirit. When you speak, you grab the attention of those that are listening. It's like there's something in you. There's something in you. There's somebody in you. There's the, 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 the Holy Spirit in you, working through you. It comes alive when you get filled with that power from on high. And that boldness is what we need. So if you have that kind of thought process that you are nothing, that you're just an old, you know, a poor little Christian that's going to get to heaven someday and I can't wait to go to the sweet by and by. That's what Jesus did not die for us to, to wait for, to get to the sweet by and by. He died so that we could preach the gospel of the kingdom or, or that we would be saved and all that with the blood of Jesus Christ but he, he died so that his message could continue on through millions and billions of people Amen. Jesus was held he was he was one man and he could only affect so many people he was human just think if Jesus had never died and he had to preach to billions of people every year they want to come and see him they want to come and see him but he said he sent the Holy Holy Spirit so that we can continue on the message, continue on the healing, continue on the deliverance, continue on the raising the dead and cleansing the lepers. This what, that's what his desire is for him, to have that boldness and say, you know, I've got something that's of value to this world, to these people in this world. And it's the message of the gospel of the kingdom. It's worth more than all the resources in the world put together by a billion times, well, but there's no, there's no amount of, of value to them. The value is incredible. If you lead one person to the world, or to the soul, I just said that. If you lead one person to Jesus, and that person gets saved and gets filled with the Holy Spirit, that one person is of more value than all the resources in the whole world. All the commodities, all the houses. You think about the, all the houses in Saskatoon. Like, the, you're worth so much more than that. Because the Bible says, what good is you is if you gain the whole world and lose your very soul? What good is that? You see, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, you've lost everything. There's people, there's, there's people that have billions and billions and billions of dollars right now, and they're fighting against God. And they think they're going to win. They think they actually think they're going to beat God. They actually have they're delusional, and they think that they're going to they're going to overtake God. And their billions of dollars will burn up, and there'll be nothing to show for it at the end of their lives. When they die, it's over. Their reward was on earth, but our reward is eternal. And our reward, our reward is Jesus for eternity. And all those people you bring. The only thing we can take to heaven is people. And the Bible says you're either gathering or you're scattering. Jesus said that. You're either gathering or you're scattering. Which one is it you're doing? I want to be a gatherer. I don't know about you. I don't want to become so religious that, that, that everything, I just become a scatterer. Scatterer. It's not everybody's going to like it me or not everybody's going to like you that's that's not the point not everybody loved jesus not everybody liked him can you imagine that? you imagine even when he walked on the earth there's people that actually hated him wanted to kill him 
Wow. And what was he doing wrong? He was healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, supplying food for people who were hungry. All he did was good. All he did was bring relief to a hurting humanity. That's all he ever did. And they hated him. And you'll be on the same team as him and there'll be people that will hate you, but you can't hate them back. Hating them back doesn't work. Loving them. Loving them, praying for them. Bible, isn't that something how Jesus said, pray for your enemies? Yeah. And he didn't say pray for your enemies like this. Lord, kill my enemies. Lord, get rid of my enemies. Lord, burn them in hell. He didn't say that. He said, pray for God to bless them. Bless them who despitefully use you and persecute you. This is beautiful stuff. So this, 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 this whole thing is about receiving power so that we can witness. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Amen? Yes. Holy Spirit, the power to witness, the power to witness the love of God to others. Is this like we're walking in, stepping into the most exciting time in the history of the world. Right, right, right now, we're, we're stepping into like the world, the, most of the world's thinking about pandemic, that this is never going to end. It's always going to be like this for the rest of our lives. They probably thought that in the Depression. When the depression was on, they probably thought World War One, World War Two. That's that. This is ever gonna. This is never gonna end. But there's a move of God coming out of this. That it's gonna shake the world. It's gonna shake shake the world. And there's still gonna be goat nations, but there's gonna be a lot more sheep nations. Amen. There's, there's gonna be lots and lots and lots. And that's what we're fighting. We're we're fighting for our nation to become a sheep nation. Right now, we're not. We're not a sheep nation. We're a goat nation. If judgment were today, we'd be judged as a goat nation. And he said, he said he's, there's going to be a, a, a separation. The sheep go on the right and the goats on the left. Right? It's kind of weird, isn't it? Left, right. They're all always just talking about left, right, kind of stuff like that. It's amazing to, to think about what's going on right now. But God is building something. God is building something in our hearts. He's given us a boldness where we walk. You, you walk outside. No longer you're going to be this meek, quiet Christian. You're going to start sharing with the love of God. You're going to start healing the sick. You're going to start seeing people, deaf ears being opened up in the marketplace. Amen. When the marketplace comes back. <laughs> it will come back. Stuff will come back. But it's going to be a lot different than it always was. But the people of God are going to shine bright, shine bright, bright, bright. So imagine now, there's probably more than 500 million spiritual Christians. Imagine the boldness that you could get. That that will, if everybody gets filled with the boldness of the Holy Spirit, it's amazing. It's amazing what transforms. I, I never used to be able to speak in front of three people. But I have the ability, now it doesn't matter how big, I don't care if it's two people, or a hundred, or two thousand, or whatever, I, it's the same for me. It's a matter of life and death for those people we're speaking to. And we need boldness, we just can't have good, uh, uh, just, just uh, we have this nice little package that we bring to people and we say, if you do this, you do that, you do this, you'll be saved, everything will be alright, nobody ever changes. And you need the fire of the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with God. You need to repent. You need to turn to Jesus with all your heart, soul, and mind. And let the fire of God fall. There's people that get filled. I was, I was, I was reading this book. Um, uh, what's his name now? James Levesque from Connecticut. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. People come. They'll be... They'll be just sitting on the steps of their church. People come and talk to them. They get saved, delivered, healed, with, healed, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. They go home. They're changed, transformed person. Come back into the church, and they're all in, immediately. They're all in. 
They're all they're they're serving God. They're they're coming in and getting some instruction. They're going out and saving more people, bringing them back in, giving them some instruction, sending them out. There's a lot of people think there's no need for the church anymore. Just go do it in your houses or whatever. You can do it in your house, but you better have results. Your house should, should your house group. If you're having a house group, it should not stay at 12 when you're when you're there. It should grow, and you should build another another group of 12, and then they develop another 12, a group of 12. Multiplication, multiplication, multiplication. That's where we got to understand. And people say, well, if we hire a really good pastor, then it will be good. No, sheep beget sheep. Did you know that? You know how sheep get sheep? They multiply. Same in the spirit realm. If, if we put our, okay, let's, let's just for, put the, the Project 2028 aside for a second. What if you led one person to the Lord this year? Because you're full of the Holy Spirit, you're full of power. One person. And you teach them to do the same thing next year. And then you go out and do another one, teach another one. And you imagine how fast that grows. If everybody in our church leads one person to the Lord, brings them into the body, equips them, and sends them out to do the same thing every year, it's amazing what can happen. And what will grow. Why don't we? Because we're lacking boldness. We don't think we can do it. Keeping your eyes on Jesus. Focusing on Him. Focusing on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Look at how Jesus prayed. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. And so He's preaching and all this stuff first. He said, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them. Because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. But he said to his disciples, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out more laborers into his harvest field. Jesus didn't pray like we all pray. We want to pray. We pray for our kids to be saved. We pray for our neighborhood to be saved. Jesus didn't really pray like that. He prayed more laborers. Sin laborers. You know somebody that doesn't want to listen to you? Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send a laborer to him. Hello? Amen? Pray to the Lord of the harvest. They don't want to listen to you? Pray to the Lord of the harvest, send a labor, a spirit-filled, bold, fire, fiery, Holy Ghost, man or woman of God. They don't have to be ordained ministers. Amen? You know what my ordination does for me? It allows me to do weddings in the province of Saskatchewan. That's what ordination, it says, Reverend Terry Severson. And they give you this thing because you can do weddings. But I was leading people to Jesus long before I got reverend put in front of my name. It's like within weeks or days, actually. Fire. Boldness. The fire is for purification and the boldness is for witnessing. And that's it. Jesus, oh man, Jesus moved with compassion. You know what he did? He was moved with compassion and it was catchy. And his disciples were moved with compassion also. Did you know that? Because all of a sudden he, 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 showed what, he showed what people can what can happen to people when they're moved with compassion. He says, okay, I'll show you what compassion does. And he healed everybody that came towards him. And he's got these young fishermen with him. And there's 12 of them. And there's these young fisher, fishermen. And there's a couple of ladies that hung around with them too. And they were, they were, they were his disciples and two. The Bible doesn't talk about much about them, but there was the twelve fishermen, and he sent them out, and he sent them out to. And this is what he said. He says, "Go and preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, 
cast out demons freely, you have received freely, give. So you are, this is what compassion would do. Now I'm sending you to do the same thing. He multiplied himself right away. This is it. That's it. Go do it. He says, all I'm doing is I'm asking you to do something simple. Now go do it. Just simple stuff. Heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, cleanse the leper. We look at that stuff, it's like, whoa, that's only for Benny Hinn. Jesus didn't think so. He commissioned his disciples to do the same thing that he was doing. And they were not, they were not, they weren't, they weren't very special people. They were just ordinary men that Jesus had picked and Jesus had equipped in Jesus' name. We must be revival on two feet. That's what we must be. Amen? Revival on two feet. The Lord's about to move in here. The Lord's about to move in here right away. There's, some, there's, there's something going on right here, right now, and the Lord is about to move. Jesus wants to bring healing to hurting humanity through you. In Jesus' name. James Levesque, I was re reading this book called Fire, and, and the Lord spoke to him one day, and I want you to think about this for a second. What would you do in this earth for me, if this is the Lord speaking to you? Now listen carefully. What one thing would you do, do in this earth for me if you knew you wouldn't fail? If I gave you all the power and money and resources to accomplish anything, what would you do? Think about it. So he's asking today, what's that one thing that you would do in Jesus' name? What could it be? Mark, I know your dream. I know what you got on the go. What you're really believing for, not dream, not just not just wishful thinking, you're believing for this. What's the one thing? What could it be? What could it be? Without holy, without the Holy Ghost boldness, without a dream, what purpose? What, what? Without a purpose, there's no way to change anything. We need, we need to find out what our purpose is, what God's purpose is. What is God's, what is God's will? God's will is that all should, that all should repent. Amen. That all should turn to Jesus and all repent and and be saved. Amen. That's His will. He sent somebody for us. Now he's sending some you to somebody else. Hello? C.T. Scott, he was a missionary evangelist, and he once wrote, Some want to live within the sound of a church or a church chapel. I want to run to I want to run a rescue shop within a yard of hell. That's what he said. I want to run. He says, I don't want to, I don't want to be living with I says, I want to run, I want a rescue shop within a yard of hell. So there's a realm of bold fire that is revert, reserved for his purposes on his terms. There's a realm of bold fire that is reserved for his purposes on his terms. How many have a dream in here? How many, how many dream about the things of God? I talk about dreaming with God on Sunday. How many have a dream? How many think about the things that you want to do with God. You have your, your dream, you, you want Fond du Lac saved. Right, sister? You want, well, that's your dream. Amen? Amen? That is nothing for the king. Amen? And that, like, you have what it takes. You have what it takes for God to work through you for whatever you need. You only believe. Just don't say, I'm just so-and-so. I'm a child of God. I'm, a, I'm a, a child of the King. I'm a son. I'm a daughter in Jesus' name. In uh, um, Mark 16. This is so good. This is for everybody. Mark 16, verse 14. It says, Later he appeared to Levin as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world. I like that now. Now listen. He rebukes them. 
says, okay, you guys. Like he's, he's angry with them because they didn't believe those who had seen him. And what did he do? He said, okay, now you need to do 40 days of fasting, 40 days on your knees in repentance, 40, let's just, and don't you move anywhere till you get that 40 days of repentance and 40 days of fasting, and don't you dare eat one morsel of food till you get this straight. He didn't say that. He said to them, this is what he said to them after he rebuked them. He said, okay, guys, go into the world, into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. And they, if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up to heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. And then they went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. So most of us missed that right there. He said the Lord was ascended into heaven and he was he was gone, but then it said they went everywhere and preached the Lord working with them everywhere they went. That's where the boldness comes from. Knowing that God is with you. Knowing that it's here. He's here tonight. I felt the presence of God strong tonight. He's here tonight. How many believe that? Amen. Now you got a voice. How many believe that? Yes. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. I know it's hot in here, but but it's a lot hotter in hell. And if we don't get to these people, they're going to have to suffer and not for eternity. It's our responsibility. Our responsibility now to bring a message of hope and healing and restoration to a world that's gone mad and dying and, and perishing. It's time, it's time for the, the fire of God. It's time for the, the anointing of God. It's time for the, this thing. To, to, there's an explosion in our heart. There's an explosion of love in our heart. God says that if you can walk in His love, you'll walk in His power. We need His love. We've got to draw near to Him. Sunday night, I seen, I was sitting here and I seen an explosion of light. I seen it right, right up here by that thing there. There was like a ball of fire, uh, like a ball of white light. It wasn't fire, it was like white light. And it was like really brilliant and it exploded and it went into everybody. It went into everybody. It shot into everybody. Most people didn't see it. Mark, you, you, you seen that? You saw that explosion. Was there somebody else? I think Linda seen it too. It just shot into everybody. We already we got what we need. <laughs> uh, it's not about feeling. It's about receiving and believing. Amen. This is it. We God has given us something. There's a there's there's an impartation that He wants to give to everybody tonight that He's already given 2,000 years ago on this planet. And every person is available for every person and we need to receive it tonight. We need to receive that. I want the worship team. You guys come back here again. We're going to carry on. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, fire. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Don't miss this tonight. Don't walk out of here. We were so close. We were so close to an explosion just before we, but I felt we had to get some of the word in tonight.